light nodes effectively um, like allow end users, ordinary users, with, like, with a, you know, a cheap laptop or mobile phone to have almost the same level of security as a full node because they can get assurances about the state of the blockchain um, using technologies like fraud proofs or ZK proofs. And like, this is the fundamental reason why the Bitcoin community has decided not to increase the block size limit. Like in, in theory, Bitcoin could do a zillion transactions per second if they increase the block size limit and optimize the, the node software. Um, but the Bitcoin community has fundamentally decided not to do that because it would increase the resource requirements for end users to run full nodes and validate the chain, which is like the, the, the pretty much the critical one of the, the critical aspects of what a blockchain is supposed to um, guarantee, that the state of the chain uh, is correct, effectively. Um, but with light, with new tech, with new light color, with new light node technology that has, that uses uh, like fraud proofs and data availability sampling and zk proofs, you can now increase the block size limit uh, without compromising the ability for end users to validate and verify the chain. Anatoly, like clients on Solana? Um, the, so the devil's in the details, obviously, here. Um, when you look at, like, uh, ETH2, like, deployment, like, go to nodewatch.io. There's about six, 6,500 machines that run the 300,000 ETH2 nodes, uh, ETH2 validators. There's only 6,500 actual boxes. Um, so the real world deployment is that you take a Solana validator and then you load it up with like a few hundred ETH2, <laughs> ETH2 nodes, right? ETH2 validators. And that's your, that's your ETH2 deployment. So the real world is that machines are getting bigger and the Solana validators are not uh, stacks of Xeon processors. They're like 32 core systems, which is what you get out of a uh, you know, like a data center right now for, you know, 800 bucks a month, um, which is not insane by any means. It's not building racks and racks of, of, of systems like you would for, you know, like a centralized service to handle all those users. Um, so there's a, a bit of like, kind of, I think, uh, like, an, I don't know, um, like you have to actually look at the details of how these things are deployed. So it's, 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 uh, I think, uh, it would be misinforming to say that the amount of hardware necessary to run Solana is that significantly different than um, any of the other chains when you actually look at how these things are, are being deployed in the real world. Um, but like clients themselves, when you're talking about like a different system for verification, uh, there's obviously trade-offs. So whenever anyone brings this up, the question that I have is, assuming all the other nodes, everything else has been destroyed. How many light clients do you need to re, re hypothecate the network to reconstruct it? So how many nodes are you trusting when you run this thing? Um, and those trust assumptions are important to users because the end state of like a, a monolithic chain is when you don't run any nodes, you're trusting that at least one out of the whatever 3,000 boxes that run the replicate Solana, at least one of them is honest. So when you run a light client, you partially participate in validation, and then you assume that at least X number of other light clients are honest to help you to actually uh, to help you get those ver like get those guarantees. So it's up to the users to pick which one and if they even care. 